Alrighty, Shalom once again. Call all Yahweh Bashim Yoshai, all praise is glory and honor due unto Yahweh Bashim Yoshai. Bahashem Rakahakwadash, and the blondest of the apostles and elders of Great Millstone GMS. That Ruwan, that do teach well, that taught me this truth. You, I say Shalom, and Shalom to the hopeful elect. Now, I was just watching this video here uh, by GMS Awakening 144, and I believe uh, the elder brother's name is Amawan Gubar. And I, I watch him from time to time. He makes pretty good lessons. And uh, I stumbled on uh, this video today, and it's called 10-4, a message received. And um, he goes on to explain what 10-4 means. And, um, you know, it's used in the trucking industry and in the military realm. 10-4, right? Message received. And pretty much, you know, um, as the watchers, the watchmen... Excuse me. Yeah, sorry about that. Message received. Right. Um, you know, as, as the watchmen and the watchers, we have received the message. You know, after we have uh, watched and analyzed, you know, we have received the message and now we're able to relay that message on to our people, you know, the Israelites. But um, what stood out to me the most in the video it pretty much started from the 15 mark all the way to like the 20 minute mark. You know, he goes on to say that um, whatever you're going through um, in the flesh or, or in the spirit, you know, it's all a light affliction and it's temporal. You know, you could be having issues and, uh, you know, with ailments, marital issues, family issues issues at your job, you know, all that stuff shouldn't phase you and it shouldn't deter you from worshiping Yahweh Bashim Yoshai because we're, we're, we're in a serious time and, uh, you know, the Lord is preparing us for greater things, right? And uh, basically he said, you know, we're at war and uh, you're not going to be comfortable when you're, when you're at war. So you have to understand what time you're in. We're in a time of war. Pursuing to Ecclesiastes, the third chapter. You know, there's a time and place for everything. And uh, you have to remember what time you're in. You know, as a man that is walking in uh, the path of Yahweh Hashem Yahushai, you know, walking in this faith, you have to understand what time you're in, right? So so always remember, you know, we're, we're really at war, and it's it's a spiritual war. It's a spiritual war. And um, you can't let uh, these people in the world, things in the flesh, phase you and deter you from serving Yahweh Bashim Shai and doing what you're supposed to do, right? So it, that you know, when I listened to that, it was very encouraging, right? Now I just have some uh, precepts here. Let me get Second uh, Corinthians chapter four, verse seventeen. You know, since he said that um, everything is pretty much. Uh, menial and minute you know the things that you're going through and i thought of uh second corinthians chapter 4 verse 17 so it says here for a light affliction which is but for a moment worketh for us a far more exceeding and eternal weight of glory that's right so <laughs> it's a light affliction notice it says light affliction not a heavy affliction so whatever you're going through because you know we're all on different levels you know younger brothers older brothers Right. Older brothers in the spirit, younger brothers in the spirit, older brothers in the flesh, and younger brothers in the flesh. We're all on different levels. But at the end of the day, your heart is your heart. And I can't say your heart is not hard because that heart was given unto you. Right. Right. So so whatever you're going through, it's light at the end of the day. It isn't heavy in the sight of Yahweh Bashim Yoshai. You know how you know who had the heaviest affliction? Yahweh Shai. Right, he had the heaviest affliction, and he he pretty much took the load off us, and that's why we have a light affliction on this go around. Right, so everything that you're going through, it's 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 really lightweight. All right, and you should take comfort in that. So whatever you're going through, just think of this precept. Okay, um, so it says for our light affliction, which is but for a moment. Yeah, that's just for a moment. It's not gonna last forever. 
worketh for us a far more exceeding and eternal weight of glory. That's right. So, you know, we're going to come uh, as, come out as the victor. We're going to come out on, on top after we go through this light affliction. Right? We're going to be on top. Just remember that. So so if, if you really believe that, why why uh why deter yourself or why why um why lose the faith and, and leave the lord you know if you really uh believe that you're going to inherit all things so anyways uh, verse 18 while we look not at the things which are seen but at the things which are not seen for the things which are seen are temporal but the things which are not seen are eternal beautiful so yeah, everything in this life is temporal. The things that you can see with your two fleshly eyes, it's all temporal. You know, this kingdom that you're walking up and about in, which is America, North America, the Western world, wherever you're situated, it's temporal. You know, it's going to change. And we know it's going to change through biblical prophecy. America is getting ready to be destroyed. So why care about this place? Now, does that mean that you don't go to work, you pay your bills, and you just give up? No. I'm just saying don't invest in this place. This place is not going to last forever. Right? So don't get caught up if if you have marital issues. You know, don't, you know, some of, some of you know, your spouse, you know, your your lover, the, the woman that you're in love with, you know, that she might take the chip if she don't believe. Why invest into that woman? Right? The Lord put you with her, but why invest into her? She's going to act like that. Why invest into these these people of the world? These people of the world, they're going to perish for their lack of belief. Right? So all these people that you see in front of you, you encounter, they're all temporal. Right? They're all temporal. And they're going to come back in the next go-around. They ain't going to make it. Now, when I read this verse here, I think of Hebrews, the 11th chapter. Right? Because if we're looking forward to the things that are not seen, that means you got to have faith. You know, because if you have faith, that means you can see the things that are not seen. And if you have faith, that means you can see the Lord and that you can serve the Lord. That's why, um, what did the Lord tell Moses when Moses found him? He told him straight up, yo, I am the power. I am the invisible power that nobody knows about on this earth. And I have revealed myself unto you. Just briefly paraphrasing that. So our Lord is a power that's not seen. But he's everywhere. He's ubiquitous. He's omnipresent. Right? So, you know, you need to have faith to serve Yahweh Bashim Yavoshai. You know, so, um, matter of fact, anyway, let me uh, get a precept. Uh, let's get Hebrews 11. Because that's what it's really going into. Faith, you know. In order for you to uh, get through the fight and to, to battle in this war that we're in, you got to have faith, right? So it says here, Hebrews chapter 11, verse 1, the subtitle says, The triumphs of faith. That's right. Faith triumphs all. Uh, you know, faith to believe. Believing in who? Yahweh Bashem Yahushai. That triumphs everything. Right? Nobody can... Nobody can come up against you. Nobody can take you down if you believe in Yahweh Bashem Yahushai. Nobody. Right? And that's what this world is trying to do. It's trying to break your spirit, trying to break your faith with all these psyops, false flags, all these, uh, uh, these agendas out here, alphabet agendas. That's all to, to destroy your faith, your belief in, in the things that are not seen. A.K.A. Yahweh Bashim Yahushai. Now it says here, verse 1, Now faith is a substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. That's right. There's a lot of evidence of the kingdom of heaven coming to pass, but it's just not seen because it's written in the scriptures. You see it in prophecy. You see it in the name, their true name. You see it in the Hebrew, Right? Right, and, and a lot of people can't see it because they don't have faith. They can't see the writing on the wall because they weren't given the faith or the belief to actually see it, right? So yeah, the evidence of things not seen. 
And that entails the kingdom of heaven, the word, and spiritual powers. You know, when you talk about those things, people think you're crazy. Right? So anyways, verse 2. For by it the elders obtain a good report. Through faith we understand that the words were framed by the word of the Most High. And you see that in uh, Genesis, the first chapter. You see that in John, uh, the, fir the first chapter. John chapter 1. Right? You know, the, you know, these Christians in the church, they read that every day, but they don't really understand what they're reading because they can't see it. <laughs> All right, so anyways, uh, framed by the word of the Most High, so that things which are seen, which were not made of things which do appear. That's right. And that's what we're looking for. That's what we're looking for. And if you believe in the things that are not seen, you won't be phased by the bullshit that's out here, man. All right, so uh, let me get another precept, you know, because we're in a war, and um, it's really a spiritual war, first and foremost. It's 90% spiritual and 10% physical, All right? So this war that we're in, it is 90% it is spiritual, and the other 10% is physical, okay? Which um, I'm using those numbers because what I'm trying to tell you, you know, it, it's... It's mainly spiritual. The bulk of this walk is spiritual. Okay? It's spiritual. Even when things do play out in the flesh, it's still spiritual. Right? So, um, let me get Second Corinthians uh, chapter 10, uh, verse 4. Um, For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through... To the most high, to the pulling down of strongholds. That's right. So, you know, the weapons of warfare are not carnal. Which is what, what it's telling you. You know, it's a spiritual fight. It's mainly a spiritual fight. And you can go into Ephesians the 6th chapter and you can talk about that. So, yes, you know, the elder brother was right. You know, we're at war. But it's mainly a spiritual war. So when demons hop on your woman, you know, one day she's fine, you know. Out of the seven days of the week, maybe three days she's fine, and the next, and all the rest of the day she's she's wicked as hell, or she's being a demon. That's all spiritual. When your kids start acting out, that's all spiritual, right? When people start acting up at the job, when you enter the room, that's all spiritual. It's because of the power that's your servant. And also, just keep in mind, you know, maybe you have some issues to resolve. Right, because we're not perfect. We're we're rehearsing the righteous acts every day, so you know we stumble and fall. So if people are acting up around you and causing you problems, you have to check yourself too. All right, and also, don't be quick to just call people a demon, or call people call people demons. You know they're acting a certain way because of what you're doing. Right, I'm just saying that because there's two sides to everything. So you have to be very cognizant and check yourself. All right. So it says, for the weapons of our warfare are not carnal. That's right. And we're not going to go out there and fight everybody that we see when they act up. Because people are going to come up come up against you and they're going to try and, and, and they're going to try and get you out of your zone and they're going to try and get you to lash out at them, to fight them physically. So what you got to do is you got to call upon the name of Yahweh Bashem Yoshai and ask him to fight your battles for you. And you're gonna see that the Lord is gonna uh, uh, fight your battles. I, I, you know, I've seen that. Other brothers can attest to that all the time. People want to get a rise out of me, try and fight me, and call upon the name of Yahweh Bashim Yosha the Most High. Deals with them, man. I've seen people get hurt. I've seen people end up in the hospital when they've come up against me, man. I've seen people get judged. I've seen people get sick. Right. So. Yeah, just call upon the name of Yahweh Bashim Yoshai and stay spiritual and stay in these scriptures. Um, so now let's get um, let's get uh, let's get Ephesians, Ephesians six. Bear with me, Ephesians chapter six, um, verse ten. The armor of the Most High. Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord. And in the power of his might. So be strong in the Lord. You know, you can't be weak in the Lord. 
Remember, the scripture says, the Lord has not given us the spirit of fear. Right? Actually, let me get that. The spirit of fear, and then I'll come back to that. Spirit of fear. You shouldn't be afraid when you're serving in Abba Hashem Yashai and when you're going to rebuke people and put them in their place. You don't fear no man. You hear me? You don't fear no man. You don't fear when people rebuke you either. Okay? Just, just take on the rebuke and move on and check yourself. You shouldn't fear when people exclude when uh, when people don't want to be around you, especially if you're you're doing the right thing. Okay. Anyways, so um, let me see here. This is a for, this is Second Timothy chapter one verse seven. For the Most High hath not given us the spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. Okay. There you go. So he has not given us the spirit of fear. You shouldn't be afraid. You shouldn't fear anybody. Especially, especially if you're coming in the name of Yahweh, Bahashem Yahweh Shai. Do you know how powerful that is? Do you know how powerful that is? So you shouldn't be afraid. Because Yahweh Bahashem Yahweh Shai, they ain't afraid of nobody. <laughs> okay? And you know, to, to build up, to build up your faith, to not make you be afraid, right? You should be reading the, the the miracles, the things that happen in the book, right? The stories of how the Lord delivered uh, the men, the ancient men, the prophets, right? The nation of Israel, right? You should be reading those uh, uh, scriptures to get comfort. Anyways, let's go back to Ephesians 6, verse 10. It says, The armor of the Most High, finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord. That's right. Don't fear anybody. And in the power of his might, put on the whole army of the Most High, that ye may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. That's right. You know, the wiles is the tricks, right? The sleight of hand, the deception. And, you, you know, to avoid deception, you got to put on this armor. You got to put on the word, which entails the name of the Lord. It starts with the name of Yahweh Shino Shai. And you got to be involved with these scriptures. That's that whole armor. Which, what is that? That's the 100% truth. Verse 12. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. So everything's spiritual. Right? Principalities, that means demons, man. Other, other gods, other powers on the left-hand side. And guess what? They do exist. Even though they're, they're idols and they're made by man's hand, they do exist. There's energy behind that. There's demonic energy behind all of that. <laughs> all right? There's actual demons. There's actual gods out there. Okay? Shatan. He actually exists. The adversary. And he's accusing you every single day. Every single day. Everything that you do, he's accusing you. And that's right. Satan's in the midst, man. Wherever you go, Satan's there. Because you're not perfect. All right, so so you have to cleave onto Yahweh Bashem Yahushai. You have to put on this whole armor to withstand. All right, so let me read this again. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood. That's right. So if it's a wrestle, it's a fight. You're wrestling. You're wrestling for the kingdom. You're wrestling to stay in this truth. You're going to be fighting demons. You're going to be fighting demons in your sleep. You're going to be getting a lot of dreams. People are going to attack you. So-called psychic attacks, for a lack of better words. I don't want to sound new agey. But yes, people are trying to curse you and fight you. And the Lord may reveal that to you. And he may, may allow you to fight them back. You may have to start putting up them curses all the time, man. Which you should be. You should be praying 24-7 non-stop. Non-stop. You should be putting up curses every single day. Give these people no rest. You should be cursing the elites. You should be cursing... This wicked kingdom. You should be cursing uh, these wicked politicians. You should be cursing the elite banking families. Right? You should be cursing these wicked government agents. You should be cursing wicked men that are found in your nation. You should be cursing everybody, man. That's wicked and off. Sending up them prayers every single day. And the Lord will never get tired of listening to it, man. He don't get tired. 
You know why? Because you got to go back and read Psalms 121. You know, the Lord, Yahweh Bashem is your keeper. He is your shade. He will protect you no matter what. But you got you to gotta believe in him. And you got to do what he says. All right. So anyways, verse 13, Wherefore take unto you the whole armor of the Most High. That's right. Not just a shield. You have to take the whole armor. Whole armor. Everything. You know, you can't have one shield and then you don't put on your helmet. You don't put on your... Your, your buckler and all that stuff. You gotta have everything. That ye may be able to withstand in the evil day and having done all to stand. That's right. And you gotta give it your all. Right? When you come to serve the Lord and when you come to fight these devils, you gotta bring it. You gotta bring it. It's either me or you. And I ain't going down, man. <laughs> That's how you gotta see it. I ain't going down. I ain't going down without a fight. Right? That's how you gotta that's how you gotta do it. Alright, so let's get another one. Let's get uh Second Timothy's chapter two. Two and four. Let's move on, man. Okay, because uh just going on the lines of what uh, the elder brother said, you know, we're at war. Right? And don't get caught up in this world. Because you're finished when you get caught up in this world. When you get caught up in this world, it will it will chew you up and spit you out, man. So this is Second Timothy chapter two, verse four. No man that warreth entangleth himself with the affairs of this life. That's right. That's right because the affairs of this life, it's all temporal. It's all bullshit. It doesn't amount to anything. Right. Okay, that he may please him who hath chosen him to be a soldier. That's right. Many are called, but few are chosen. Okay, and, and uh, the Lord, you know, when you're called into this thing, you're going to function like a soldier. You know what a soldier is? A soldier is solitary. That's what the word soldier pretty much means. It means to be solitary. You know, if you're a solitary, that means you're on your own and you're walking on that straight path, that straight gate. And, and you don't have privilege, privileges like the average civilian. You don't have privileges. You're a soldier. You know, you're a civil servant. You're always going to be fighting. You're going to be you're going to be like a stoic. Right? You get up at 5 in the morning. You're doing your drills, you're doing your push-ups, you're doing your patrols. Right? Right? When, when when you translate that to being in the truth, you know, that means you're diligent. For lack of better words, you're just diligent. Right? Serving the Lord to the best of your ability, the best way you can. And if you're a soldier, you can't compare yourself to these people in the world. You may see these people in the world getting up there. You may see them getting promotions. You may see them doing this, doing that. It may look good. But that don't mean shit because they ain't living the life that you're living. They ain't serving the Lord. And really, they can't handle it. They can't handle being in the truth. They can't handle being a soldier. They can't go a day without a paycheck. Right? They, they can't go a day without eating pork. They can't go a day without eating fucking shrimp. That's how some of these people are out here. They can't, they can't go week in and week out like you, but you were called to do that. You were called to be a soldier. They can't do that. They're not built for that. Right? So, so just take comfort in that, man. And if a man also strive for masteries, yet... Is ye not crowned except ye strive lawfully? And that's what you're doing, man. You have to strive lawfully to become a master. And which, what, what does that mean? You're going to get the kingdom. You see, these people, they don't strive lawfully. These people cut corners. And you're going to notice that if you're a man of the Lord. You know, when you're doing the right thing, you get penalized for doing the right thing. I'm talking about when you do things in the world with people. You do the right things and then they, then, then you don't get anywhere. You do all the right things with these fucking people. You do what they say and then they don't get anywhere. And then when 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 uh when a person in the world he's trying to do the exact same thing that you're doing in the world, he can cut corners and then he'll get promoted. In anything, not just jobs, in anything, man. You'll you'll see it. You'll see it. And that's just what you have to go through. Right? You have to do things by the book. And uh you're gonna be hated for it. 
But guess what? You can't let that phase you and deter you from serving Yahweh Bashim El Shai because there's a greater reward. There is a greater reward, I'm telling you. All right, so anyways, let's move on. All right, let's start at uh, Philippians chapter 4. Uh, I'm going to start at verse uh, 10. Subtitle is, The Most High's Provisions. That's right, provisions in battle. And that's what the Lord's going to give you. And you're going to learn to be obeyed while you're serving the Lord and while you're in battle. Because when you're in battle, you're obeyed. You, you, don't, you don't have a lot. It's not going to be comfortable. It's not going to be luxurious. All you're going to have to rely on is Yahweh Bashim Yoshai's provisions. Day by day. Day by day. And that's what uh, St. Paul is talking about. St. Apostle Paul. That's <laughs> what he's going into. So uh, this is uh, Philippians chapter 4 verse 10. But I rejoiced in the Lord greatly that now at the last your care of me hath flourished again. Wherein ye were also careful, but ye lacked opportunity. Now that I speak in respect of want, for I have learned in whatsoever state I am, therewith to be content. That's right. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter if you're your lowest. You're content. All right. It doesn't matter. Nothing phases you. You're content. You got the name of the Lord. He gave you your your daily bread. He gave you your food. He gave you your water. You got shelter. You know your needs are taken care of because that's what you're gonna get. That's what King David said. Give me neither riches nor poverty. But you're going to be taken care of. All right? You're going to be taken care of. It doesn't matter, man. Like, you know, I'm not fucking starving. I don't eat out of a trash can. I'm taken care of, man. I'm eating good. The Lord provides, the Lord provides what my needs. You know, there's, there's a lot of homeless bums out here, man. Not doing good. And, you know, when we were at the camp, a lot of people used to call us bums. You know, it was homeless people even do coming at, up to the camp calling us bums, but they're eating out of a trash can. But we're eating good. We're eating good. We're eating lawful foods. We're getting, we're eating the manuka honey. We're detoxins. We're getting stronger spiritually. Right? Right. So anyways, uh, verse, verse 12, I know both how to be abased. That's right. And when you come into this truth, you're going to be abased. What does the word abased mean? Actually, yeah, I'm already here. Let me see. Interlinear here. Let's go here. Let's see the word. Let's see if it gives us a definition. Uh, tapino. To make low, bring low, to level, reduce to a plane, to bring into a humble condition. That's right. Just like Yahweh Shai. Zechariah chapter 9, verse 9. When he came riding into Jerusalem on the donkey and the mule, Lowly and meek, right? Humble. Lord, Lord disguised him as, as a as a lowly character, but really he's really high up in the spirit. He's the highest, right? But uh, yeah, that's what it means to be a base. You're going to be humble. Okay, so it says, "I know both how to be abased, and I know how to abound. Everywhere in all things, I'm instructed both to be full and to be hungry." Both to abound and to suffer need, which is balance. Okay? Balance. I can do all things through Hamashiach which strengthen me. It doesn't matter what position in your position you're in. You can do anything. You can do anything. And you have to believe that. I can do fucking anything. Right? Nobody can stop you. And nobody can stop you how Bashem Yawashai. All right, nobody can stop you. Nobody can take this eternal truth away from you. It doesn't matter if you're locked up. All right. It doesn't matter if you're if you're a paraplegic. Nobody can stop you if you believe Yahweh Bashem Yahushai. Anything can happen. Anything can happen. All right. So uh, yeah, I can do all things through Hamashiach Yahweh Shai, which strengthen me. That's right. All right, so anyways, what else? What else I got? Now, nah, that's all. So, you know, I just thought about uh, those uh, precepts. I hope this was edifying. Like I said, I'll put a link in the description. You're in post-production, so you can uh, watch the Elder Brothers channel and watch the video yourselves. You know, go subscribe to him. 
all right now i don't know him personally i don't i don't really know him but i do like uh the channel i watch it when i when i get time to um so with that just want to give all praises glory and honor do unto yahweh bashim yavshai bahashem rakhachadash double honors to the apostles and elders of great millstone gms and uh shalom